Thank you very much, Johanna, and thank you everybody for joining today. Um, really appreciate uh, the interest in the work that we're doing, but also very happy to share some of the learnings that we've had over the course of the last couple of years in actually starting an innovation support function at the World Food Program, as well as um, supporting innovations uh, in the organization and outside. Now, um, at the World Food Program, what really drives a lot of these um, work towards innovations is the vision and the sustainable development goals, uh, achieving zero hunger by 2030. And clearly, if we want to get to zero hunger, we need to do something differently. Um, for sure, one element of how we can get to zero hunger could be uh, more funding. Uh, but one of the key levers, and this is something that our previous uh, executive director and current executive director strongly believe in, is innovation. So how can we deviate from this linear progression towards zero hunger, towards really making that next transformative, disruptive step. And this is why innovation was also seen as something really, really important. Um, it's how we can systematically identify and support those innovations across the, the World Food Program. Now, um, when we talk about innovation in the World Food Program, typically they come uh, across two elements of trends. One is in the areas of technology. So Yes, for sure, a lot of people talk about artificial intelligence, robotics or blockchain, um, or agri-tech or mobile devices, but yet there's another element about new business models. And I think this is something that shouldn't be forgotten that a lot of the innovation that we are seeing could be adaptations of already existing technologies to developing countries or making sure that uh, services that have been provided maybe uh, for free before can be on a cost, um, um, coverage model or from a market-based solution. So this is really one of those areas that we are actively exploring at, uh, at the World Food Program. Now, coming to the Innovation Accelerator, uh, and this is uh, a supports infrastructure that we've built up. Uh, it's something that we kick-started um, a bit over three years ago um, that we've been able to kick-start uh, with the generous support of the German government based here in Munich in Germany. Um, but what we actually did is we went out to our colleagues in the World Food Program. So back in the, um, at that time, we looked at the best practice that's existing outside of the World Food Program, be it uh, you know, colleagues at UNICEF and UNHCR that had innovation labs before the World Food Program, but also looking into private sector, like big corporates, but also technology companies. Um, and at the same time, we interviewed over 70 people inside the organization, really listening to them what is it that's currently hindering the systematic identification, support, and scaling of innovations? And so we came up with um, the following five functions for the accelerator. Now, these functions have been there in approximately like the, uh, they are here right now from the start, but they have evolved over time. Um, so it's really five functions, starting with a uh, small uh, exploring the future, which we call thought leadership, then sourcing new innovations, our uh, intensive training programs uh, called boot camps, then the sprint program, which is the dedicated support, and then ultimately leading into scale-up enablement. And this really also shows you the progression for the logic of why we're doing this is ultimately why we exist as a support infrastructure is we want to support innovators uh, and uh, in, uh, entrepreneurs to really bring those innovations to scale. Um, so, and this is the journey that we're trying to do. So in the last three years, we had about 3000 applications uh, globally, um, 14 bootcamps so far uh, with 130 teams. We've had 40 projects that we had supported dedicated and eight of those are we now considering being in scale up. So really going, uh, beyond the impact of 100,000 people and more than one country. Now, but let me talk a little bit about um, the specific um, uh, of those functions. And uh, we will have uh, a larger chunk of Q&A time just after this for you to ask questions and um, uh, to really find out more. Um, so starting off with thought leadership, uh, what we're doing there is for the organization, it's a very, very small portion of what we do, but really exploring uh, the, next disruptive or game-changing trends for products or services. So we have uh, entered into partnerships with uh, different technology companies, but also thought leaders like Singularity University, XPRIZE, uh, Google, um, to, to really uh, explore with them on some of the cutting edge uh, 
trends, how we could harness those in our case for the work of the World Food Program and uh, ending hunger. Uh, the second function coming to innovation sourcing uh, is something we've uh, been experimenting with a lot. So right now there is three ways how um, people can reach out to us. Uh, so first of all, people can reach out online. So everybody can apply. So World Food Program staff, it can be uh, for-profit startups, NGOs, companies, other UN agencies, and it's always open. So we just cut off three times a year and actually go through all those applications, but essentially it's always open to apply. Um, the second element is we do active sourcing. So for instance, we go to tech events um, um, and actually look for those innovations that do targeted outreach as well, specifically looking for capabilities uh, for problems that we've observed in the World Food Program. And then the last here uh, is innovation challenges. And some of you may have seen that webinar about that that we did before at the, uh, the union. Um, this has proven to be uh, very interesting from an element of identifying new startups and innovations as well as really uh, building the culture inside of the organization as well. So like it's something that really also serves us well in terms of like really broadcasting and knowledge sharing. So it's not just about those innovators, but also in the broader making it known what is actually possible. Um, and to show you an example of the campaign that we did last year, it was, we called it Disrupt Hunger campaign. Um, it was really a combination of all sorts of uh, activities. So there was a website, a blog, and our internal uh, internet page. We did in-person in workshops at our headquarters in different field locations. Um, we got news coverage, social media campaign, virtual info sessions, as well as posters that we actually uh, did. And as one of the uh, best performing social media post actually of last year. It was a, uh, our executive director did a Facebook live post where we had innovators from the organ across the organization pitch their ideas uh, to him, uh, kind of a um, shark tank type uh, pitch event. Um, and that really also resonated well with uh, the organization. Now, so that was innovation sourcing. Moving on to innovation boot camps. This is our high intensity training program right now for our internal projects we, uh, in for WFP, we right now host it three times a year. Uh, it's a five day program where the goal is to really bring innovations and startups from wherever they are uh, to the next level. So if you just have uh, a rough idea or prototype, how can we help you to reach the next level and get a, uh, test this idea? Uh, if you already have tested uh, this idea and already have traction, how can we help you maybe explore expansion in the next country. Uh, and we're right now working through a five-day program where we uh, work alongside what's right now um, uh, the elements of what you would need even in private sector for a successful startup. Looking into is your product fit for the market? Um, so does it address the needs of the people? How is the experience of those that actually deal with it? Well, marketing coaching, technology coaching, and then we have something that we call boutique coaching, which that depends uh, uh, on the specific needs of the startup. In the last uh, 14 boot camps, um, a couple of those we've also organized together with Google Launchpad. Um, because their model for for-profit startups is very similar to the bootcamp model that we have. Now, um, th this bootcamp uh, is something that we ex also experimented with. So we did a three-day, a five-day, a 10-day program. Uh, right now, we are sticking with a five-day program because we believe that gives us the best value for money in terms of how far we can push those innovations as well as how much um, uh, it costs. And typically, we also do uh, on Thursday night and a pitch night. Um, so this gives the startups and the internal WFP teams the opportunity to present in front of an audience of WFP senior managers, uh, uh, government partners, private sector partners, but also investors. Uh, and oftentimes they find um, uh, people or entities that can help them really push the innovation forward after that. Now, the one thing we actually piloted last year, and I want to mention this, is uh, the Bootcamp as a Service, uh, which was actually based on an uh, interaction with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, we had one of the um, and Gates Foundation expert uh, actually participate in one of our programs as a mentor. Um, and he was so excited that we then uh, did a pilot with them for the Grand Challenge Vaccine Delivery Bootcamp. Um, and the goal of that was really to also increase the 
probability of uh, to go to scale for their uh, grand challenge process and to improve the performance of the winners. And uh, for us, really, why we also think that was uh, important was we wanted to make sure that the learnings that we've had actually also benefit the broader innovation ecosystem. Um, and uh, at, uh, at this uh, Gates Foundation Bootcamp, also colleagues from uh, UNICEF, Gavi, WHO were actually present. So uh, it was really one of those things where we saw like this can actually be something that you know uh, it's both as a learning but also making sure that some of the processes that, we, that we've already tested we can actually pass on to other um, uh, organizations in the uh, in the ecosystem now coming to the uh, th uh, third um, activity which we call spring program this is Typically, what you would also see in private sector, uh, a kind of acceleration program. So it's a three to six month program. We provide up to $100,000 in terms of funding. It's a grant um, funding. So both if it's an internal World Food Program team, it can for an external team. Uh, also, if it's a for-profit startup, it's essentially a contract that we provide. We also provide one of our in-house entrepreneurs that's assigned to a team. Uh, and in extreme cases, it can be a full-time capacity that that works with the team for up to six months. Uh, and we connect those teams with our field operations on the ground and or some of our partners, depending on what the needs of the projects are. Um, so we've uh, typically what we see that uh, a lot of the teams that are, for instance, like having lots of understanding of the local context and the environment, they may have challenges uh, understanding how you really build an innovation uh, from a technology angle and how you make it scale. Uh, whereas if you have, let's say, a startup from the US or from Western Europe, they oftentimes really lack the in-depth understanding of how life in a refugee camp works or how, uh, for instance, the dynamics in developing countries work and how you really enable solutions with the people on the ground. Um, and this is something where uh, we are essentially forcing the teams, if they're not uh, doing that on their own, to use what, what's called human sent design lean startup methodologies. This is what uh, essentially everybody in Silicon Valley does. So, uh, which means you start small, you test, and then once you test it with the real people, you develop it with them and actually going uh, to scale. Now, just as a quick snapshot, uh, we support the innovations wherever the user is. Um, so uh, uh, in those countries, wherever they are. So typically that it could be, for instance, like in Sudan, South Sudan, could be in Colombia, uh, could be in Cambodia, like everywhere where the people are affected by hunger. And this is also where we believe we can add value. It's not just our innovation accelerator here based in Munich. I mean, yes, we, we are based here, but in reality it's our field operations that can really help uh, unblock uh, some of those innovations also in getting them to scale. Now, and the last piece that I want, just want to mention before coming to q &A is going to scale. So uh, a specific example uh, is really this uh, building blocks project, uh, which um, initially started. So the gentleman that you see here on the left, Homer and Haddad, he came to one of our boot camps first. He then was in the sprint program and after six months, the project, um, uh, so in, in the first month of operation, they did a pilot with 100 people, five months later already with 10,000. And another six months later, they already reached over 100,000 people in the um, Azra camp um, in, um, in Jordan, uh, in Zatri. So this is something where uh, it's kind of the prototype of starting small learning with the people uh, and getting to a, a scalable model. And this, the, and the, just to say the, the eight scale-up teams right now are a mix between innovations that are internal to WFP, like uh, right now, like building blocks where, I mean, we, one of those are, we're already uh, uh, piloting um, with UN Women and we're also looking into other collaboration with other UN NG entities, I NGOs on that uh, front. But then there's others that uh, take, for example, what's called on the top right, uh, age to grow or hydroponics. Um, right now, this is uh, already active in eight countries and we have active interest for more than 10 countries um, and including 
uh, Oxfam that has been uh, developing this with us in Algeria to really get this to scale. Um, so you see the, a lot of the scaling pathways here also can be tailor-made. So it's not always a uh, one size fits all. Sometimes they may be integrated in core processes of the World Food Program. Sometimes the growth path uh, can be outside. 